At this point, either you're a calculus student who's gone over the previous two lessons and knows how to find the magnetic field due to any collection of currents in space, at least in theory, or you're a non-calculus student, in which case we gotta get you up to speed real quick on just a few things. You'll remember from the previous module that if we have steady electric current in the same direction, it generates a steady magnetic field that curls around the wire in circles. We saw with the calculus students that the magnetic field lines actually are perfect circles, and to find the direction of the magnetic field, we use the modified right hand rule, so pointing our thumb in the direction of the current, and our fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field like this. So if we know the direction of the field, what's the magnitude of the field? If you have a long wire carrying current I, the magnitude of the magnetic field a distance R away from the axis of the wire is given by mu naught I over 2 pi R. That's pretty much it to get you up to speed. Now everybody's on a level playing field for this lesson. We know from the previous module that a current carrying wire stuck in a magnetic field will feel a magnetic force that pulls on the wire in some direction. We saw the equation of the force felt by the wire was IL cross B, where B is the external magnetic field. We also now know, thanks to this lesson and the previous two lessons, that a current carrying wire generates its own magnetic field, given by this equation. and the modified right-hand rule gives us the direction of that magnetic field. So something interesting we can do is imagine we have two long straight wires parallel to each other carrying currents with different magnitudes but in the same direction, say I1 and I2. Each one produces a magnetic field in space and each one feels a force due to the magnetic field that the other produces. What's the force that wire 1 feels due to the magnetic field that wire 2 produces? Remember from the earlier equation, its magnitude is just mu naught times I2 all over 2 pi d, where d here is the perpendicular distance between the two wires. If that's the magnitude of the field, what's the direction of the field due to the second wire? The direction is just given by our modified right-hand rule. We point our extended thumb in the direction of the current I2 and wrap our fingers around the wire, and our fingers indicate the direction that the circular field lines curl in. In this case, the magnetic field on wire 1 due to wire 2 just points straight up. Now that we have the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field acting on wire 1, we can find the magnetic force on wire 1 using our IL cross B equation. The magnetic force on wire 1 is the current through wire 1, times the length vector of wire 1 crossed with the magnetic field created by wire 2 that now acts on wire 1. In this case, since the current I1 and the external magnetic field B2 make right angles, the magnitude of the force is just the three magnitudes I1, L1, and B2 multiplied together because theta is just 90 degrees and sine 90 is 1. B2 here is just mu naught I2 over 2 pi d. It's the magnetic field produced by wire 2. And that completes our determination of the magnitude of the force on wire 1 due to wire 2. If we want the direction of the force, we have L cross B. So just use the OG right hand rule. Point your right fingers in the direction of the L vector, or the direction of the current, and then curl your fingers in the direction of B2, and your extended thumb points in the direction of the force F1. In this case, pointing towards the second wire. So that's it for wire 1. The force on wire 1 due to wire 2 is just mu naught I1 I2 times L1 all over 2 pi d. And the direction is towards the other wire in this case. Wire 1 is attracted to wire 2. Now I could slowly go through the motions for the force on wire 2 due to wire 1 using very similar arguments like I've just laid out. But what we'd find is that the magnitude of the magnetic force on the second wire is the force on the first wire, but with all the subscripts swapped. So 1 becomes 2 and 2 becomes 1. Feel free to verify it yourself if you don't believe me. I'll just spoil the direction of this force too. The direction is just opposite the direction of F1, so the wires attract each other when the currents are in the same direction. Now I should stress one thing. Both wires have to be not only straight, but long in order for mu naught i over 2 pi d to be a reasonable approximation we can use for the magnetic field due to each wire. If each wire is really long, or L is really large, that means F might be really large as well. 
So it often makes sense to divide out L on both sides, and we call lowercase f the magnetic force per unit length on each wire. It's the total magnetic force that acts on the wire per meter of the wire. So we don't have to worry about the long length of the wire taking over all the other variables, in which case we can see that the force per unit length on each wire would actually be the same. The last thing we want to mention is here we solved for the magnetic force on two wires carrying current in the same direction, but what if they carried currents in opposite directions? Well, we could go through all the motions again, but I encourage you to try it out for yourself. For each wire, it's just two steps. Find the magnetic field due to the other wire, then find the magnetic force on this wire due to that magnetic field. What we would find is that the forces on each wire are the same magnitudes as before, but pointing in opposite directions. The wires actually push each other apart instead of pulling each other together. That's a fact so convenient in introductory magnetism that it's worth memorizing. When you have two wires which carry currents in the same direction, they attract each other with equal and opposite magnetic forces per unit length. When you have two wires which carry currents in the opposite direction, they repel each other, still with equal and opposite forces per unit length though. In both cases, the magnitude of the force per unit length that each wire feels is given by mu naught i1 i2 over 2 pi d, where d is the perpendicular distance between the wires.